Well, no dice in here today because I'm gonna show you guys how to create Hollywood magical effects inside of Houdini for your projects. Let's have a look. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Alden Dauti and I'm a senior FX artist working at Filmgate Visual Effects in Sweden. And Dyson will be back, don't you worry. So I've been in the VFX industry for around 13 years right now and I've worked on movies, TV shows, series, feature film going from Hollywood to European and all the way to Bollywood. And I worked on movies like Rambo Last Blood, The Hit My Wife's Bodyguard, What, what the, the fuck? The Burning Sea and all the way to the Indian blockbuster movie called Patan. So today's tutorial will be about how to create this kind of magical particle effects with lots of energy into it that's very common use in these kind of Marvel movies these days. So we will have them done in two chapters. So the first chapter will be more about creating the base setup, working with the particles and some smoke and pyro simulations and combine them together and make them a little bit more, you know, unique and not too uniform. And the second part will be about more the rendering and the look of the particles, working with some attributes and for you to gain more control, how to do the final look and the desired look you're going for your project. So having that said, let's jump right into Houdini and make some magic. All right, inside Houdini, we're gonna create this effect setup using a simple object. So let's create a simple sphere geometry. Let's call this particles. Now let's jump in and create a transform node and add some rotation to the sphere. All right, now let's create a pyro source since we're gonna start with creating some pyro simulations. Now let's use the surface scatter for particles and also add some density to it. And also we add some volume rasterize attribute and add our density to it. We do also need the velocity attributes from the sphere rotation by creating a trail node and compute the velocity. Now let us check the velocity and it's all set up, but usually you can also transfer the velocity attributes if you actually compute it before the pi resource. But I prefer to do it this way with a simple scene. And also let us add the velocity attributes to the rasterize attribute node. And now let's create the pyro solver. And now we have some smoke simulation going on with our velocity added to it like that. And also let's go in and delete a couple of stuff. Let's go to the output and delete temperature, flame and color data. We don't need those. Now in the look section, let's uncheck the fire and assign material. Now in shape, uncheck buoyancy and add turbulence. Increase the turbulence all the way to one. And let's go further down, uncheck the use control field and add density instead of temperature in the threshold field. Next up is the sourcing. Now we only need to delete two things here, which is the flame and the temperature. Okay, let's have a look with just turbulence. All right, and now let's combine it together with the velocity. You can have these additional swirls applied to it, which makes it more interesting. Here is without the turbulence. As you can see, you have this swirl going around from the velocity we computed, and now we combine it together with the turbulence and you get this interesting pattern. Now let's go to the setup and just slow it down a little bit more, like 0.66 should be fine. So we can have it a little bit slower so it doesn't go too crazy when we do the particle simulation and the actual render itself. So yeah, this is just a small touch to the Pyro Solver. Now, just a quick break here. If you have any interest of the project file itself, you can get it at the Dyson's Patreon page. With my first appearance here, you can get an access with 50% off the subscription. There's lots of great Houdini stuff there to check out. Now, if you want to communicate and have any specific questions, be sure also to check out Dyson's Discord channel. Link in the description. So the Pyro Solver is done for now. Let's go now and create the particle system. 
Now, the main goal of this chapter is to make the particle move with the same velocity as the pyrosolver. Now, let's go inside and delete the merge node and do a couple of adjustments. Let's increase the particle birth rate to like 10,000 particles to start with and change the age up to 1.1 or something. And also the jitter birth to negative so we don't have that weird stepping from the particles. Now, let's add a pop advect by volume so we can transfer the pyro velocity to the pop net. Change the velocity source to the second context input and the advection type to update velocity and the velocity blend to 1 for full advantage of the pyro velocity. So now we need to connect the pyro solver to the second input of the pop net. So let's go out and connect the pyro solver to the second input of the pop net. Let's go in and check and let's re-simulate. And there we go. Now we have the particles advected by the volume of the pyrosolver with its velocity. Now we can see them merge together and see how they're playing around with the same velocity. Now let's create the final touches to this by breaking up the pattern a little bit. So let's create a VOP attribute. Let us also increase the particle amount to 100,000 particles so we can have a better understanding what we are trying to achieve here. Now, if we take a closer look of the particles, we can clearly see the entire geometry is emitting particles. So to make it more interesting is by breaking up the silhouette of the geometry. This part right now is mostly optional to do, but I prefer to break things up a little bit more. Now, head back to the geometry and increase the polygon amount. You can do this actually at the very beginning, but this is just for demonstration. Now take the VOP attribute and put it after the geometry and let's dive inside. And here we're going to create some diffuse color with some turbulence on top of it. So for this, we only need ramp and turbulence connected together. And let's also promote the input parameters for the turbulence so we can adjust the frequency and the look of the turbulence outside the VOP. So from here, we're just going to play around a little bit with the RAM parameters and the frequency of the turbulence so we can isolate the white and dark areas. The white area is going to be where we're going to emit the particles and the dark area is going to get excluded. And by this, we can have this more a little bit unique and interesting look when we do the particle effects. And on top of this, let's also make the offset of the noise pattern to be animated so it continues to generate new noise pattern uh, as the timeline goes. So by this, we can always have new shapes coming around over and over again. Now, going back to the particles, we can see the diffuse color has been transferred into the pop net. With the diffuse color in the pop net, we can now actually separate the dark and white area for particle emission. Now to the source section, we go down to the emission attribute and type CD for the diffuse color. And now we finally have the particles only emitting on the white values from the VOP attribute, which makes things break up a little bit better and make it more interesting when we emit particle effects from geometries. And now we are officially done with the tutorial. So right now we have created pop particles that get advected by pyro simulation with some interesting patterns when we emit particles so we can have it a little bit more unique for the next chapter. All right, that's it for today. But on the next chapter, we will go through how to render the particles in order to make it more magical in the final output. Until then, have a good one.